Welcome to the Spa Retailer Podcast, where we talk about retail, business, and all things related to the hot tub industry. Here's your host, Megan Kendrick. Hi, I'm Megan, Managing Editor at Spa Retailer. I'm here with our publisher, David Wood, and this is the very first episode of the Spa Retailer Podcast. So, Dave, welcome to our first episode. I'm super excited. As you know, this has been in the works for a long time. And finally, uh, finally, we're launching this. So I'm excited to uh, to share this with our subscribers. Yeah, I am too. Do you listen to podcasts, Dave? Because I listen to a ton of podcasts. I am. You know, uh, I'll be honest. I don't usually listen to a lot of business related podcasts, which I think would be the natural answer for for most people, at least uh, for the small business owners that are our subscribers. I tend to work on more of the left brain side, more arts and music and. Uh, you know, things that kind of hopefully provide a little bit of balance in our lives. So uh, I will refrain from giving you individual names because I'd probably embarrass myself, but yeah, it's, I, it's, it's a great, great escape. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, having a toddler, um, you know, you don't want to have the TV on all the time, but you kind of want to pull your hair out sometimes after listening to Wheels on the Bus for the 50th time that day. So podcasts have been really nice for me. Totally. I can turn that on and like give myself a little bit of a break. Um but yeah, like you, I only recently started listening to some business ones, um, and I've got some good ones that, you know, maybe we can talk about at another time that I think some of our readers would even be interested in checking out. But but like you, a lot of it is, <laughs> you know, just the fun stuff, uh, true crime, and Absolutely. Things, things like that. It's a nice, it's a nice break. Well, there's so many options available, too. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, we hear this, and I think we, we try to preach it in the magazine. I'm not sure and hopefully we're successful at it, but, you know, we try to preach work on your business instead of in your business. And, you know, podcasts are a great way that, uh, you know, when you have that little bit of downtime that you can look for other ways to be exposed to ideas of other merchants, maybe in a completely different industry that are doing something really great. If you get one good idea, then I guess that 15 minute podcast was worth it. Yeah, I completely agree. So I thought for this first podcast that we would kind of give a little bit of our backstory. Um, you know, pretty much every person I interview for the magazine, I ask them how they got into the hot tub industry. Um, just, I think it's interesting to hear people's origin stories and it helps me understand them and puts the rest of what they tell me uh, in context. And so I thought that would probably be interesting to do for the magazine as well. They, so that people kind of understand where we're coming from um, and where we've come from. Uh, I didn't work Absolutely. at I didn't work at Spa Retailer until I think the third issue, so uh, pretty not, pretty early on, but not there right from from the beginning. So um, that's going to have to be you, Dave. How did Spa Retailer get started? <laughs> well, it's you know it's, it's interesting. You know, for those that have been in the industry a while, um, know that really everything associated with the pool and spa industry is lumped together as pool and spa. The shows, the events, the training. Even many of the marquees on the side of a building will say, you know, Dave's Pool and Spa Store or uh, Dave's Pool and Spa Builders or whatever your name might be. And, you know, what we really uh, found is when, we, when I first started uh, Big Fish in 1999, we were a pool-only business. Um, and we focused on helping people. We're based in Scottsdale, as many of you know. You know, in Arizona, everyone has a swimming pool. So if you need to buy a pool, you'd ask your neighbor. You could ask 20 neighbors on each side of you. Chances are 19 out of 20 of you have a pool with it being 115 in the summer. But if you're from Michigan or New Jersey or one of these other markets, that's not a very common purchase. I wish there was more. Um, And so Pool Search came out of that need to help homeowners evaluate not only why to buy a pool, but the advantages and the equipment and all those uh, components that are part of it. It wasn't until we had been doing pool search for four or five years that we realized this kind of disconnect with a lot of both retailers and consumers that uh, would go in and be looking for a pool. And then they would realize, you know, in the whole scheme of things, a spa is a better fit for them. And we found that many pool builders, frankly, were ill-equipped to talk about the specifics of of selling a hot tub, uh, as odd as that might sound. And, and frankly, we found the same on the, on the spa side, too. Even though they were selling both products, there seemed to be a real disconnect between both products. Right. And for too often, you know, spas were kind of treated as the stepchild of the pool industry. 
And I always, that always bothered me immensely. I mean, this is a huge industry. Uh, we don't have any of the capacity problems of the pool industry. If, if there's a thousand people that come to my retail store in a given year, I'm positive we can find a supplier that can sell me a thousand hot tubs. You can't do that with a pool business. So when we really started looking at merchants that were really innovative with selling a lot of hot tubs, we realized that they fundamentally ran their business different, even if they were a pool builder. And we just felt like it was really important to create a trade magazine that really isolated that part of the business, which again, if you were a pool and spa retailer, the spa business still might be a significant part of your business. But we essentially treat a swimming pool as a competitor of spa right. retailer. We actually, as you well know, we, we have a spell check. We run the word pool whenever we run a spa retailer and go to press to make sure that, you know, uh, that we, we adequately cover uh, uh, the pool's uh, in a way that is a competitive product. We don't accept any pool advertising in spa retailer. It's strictly a hot tub magazine. And as you know, I mean, the kind of the rest of this history, we're celebrating our 10th year. Uh, we just dominate that of the, the trade uh, side of the business. And I'm incredibly grateful for the feedback that we've gotten from retailers across the country. So it's just grown from first a quarterly, and now we, we run six issues a year, which seems to cover our topics uh, sufficiently. As you know, we focus kind of kind of on coffee table topics. I mean, we're not a news magazine. Uh, we don't deal with breaking news in the hot tub industry. I'm not sure there's not enough news to warn it. We want to look for topics that even if you were to look at spa retailer from a year ago, hopefully most of the topics are very relevant in your business today. Right. And since this is our 10 year anniversary, um, I have been looking back at uh, old magazines and kind of seeing some <laughs> of the things that we've done in the past. And, and that actually holds pretty true. I mean, there's, so, there's a lot of articles from even our first year that we could still run in spa retailer today, and they could be very relevant. Um, not so much the ones that are related to uh, the internet, <laughs> but right, other, right. but otherwise things are, things are still, um, still very relevant. Um, but you did say it is our 10 year anniversary, which is really exciting. Um, we have a lot of fun things planned in the magazine for our 10 year anniversary um, and probably in the podcast, the podcast as well. Um, I didn't show up until Sispa retailer until um, I mean, I think I mentioned, I think the third issue. So I've been here right. for, uh, for about nine years working in the, in the hot tub industry. And it's changed a lot in that short amount of time. No question. Kind um, of shocking, isn't it? It really, it really is how much it's changed. I mean, when you started the magazine, it was, I guess people call the heyday <laughs> a little yeah. bit. Um, but that wasn't, that wasn't very long. I feel like when I, the once, peak of the peak. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, uh, we had about four or five issues, uh, before, uh, what we now call the great recession with, uh, with basically the implosion of the, the home market. But, uh, yeah, I think it really about uh, forced merchants and manufacturers to really reevaluate because so many of them came into the market with very large factories. There was, I can think of five or six major brands that literally opened factories between 2004 and 2007, only to have that was uh, that capacity challenged quite greatly from 2008 through really probably the end of 2010. So there have definitely been some challenges, and as you know, unfortunately the number of total hot tub retailers has gone down, but those players that have survived this, as you know, are in tremendously uh, uh, fantastic shape in terms of eliminating their competition. They're growing very fast. Many of them have multiples now and their profitability has really taken off now that the economy has uh, uh, more than stabilized. It's actually really starting to grow. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting. It's very rare now that I will call up a hot tub retailer and I don't get off the phone feeling that I have talked to an incredibly savvy business owner. Um, and when I first started, that wasn't always the case. You know, you, you, you would talk to some people who uh, didn't sound like they maybe had a real handle on their business. That is not the case anymore. Anyone I talk to is, no. is solid. Um, but it's interesting. Absolutely. It's interesting during that time of, um, I guess, distress in the market. It really gave the magazine, I felt like, a chance to differentiate ourselves, and uh, and I think we did because during that time when things were really tough, we did focus on providing solid business stories, trying to help retailers, and we 
um, put a positive spin on things as much as we could. And I think during that time, we really got a foothold, even though it was tough for everyone, including us uh, financially. It, I think it made a big difference um, to our readers. I agree. I, you know, I look back and there's certain things that you, you hope you create your own luck. And I think, you know, we're like most of our subscribers. I mean, we, we try to work hard and try to work smart, but I can honestly say one of the things that I'm most proud of as a, as, as we kind of transitioned spa retailer through that uh, kind of difficult time was we always took a positive outlook and I, I cannot tell you the, I mean, I'm not dozens, hundreds of retailers over that time that reached out. If you look back at all of our covers and our content, you know, our, our subscribers are very smart people. They know times are tough. I don't need to reiterate them and pound them on bankruptcies and the market being down. And I mean, they know many of them were closing locations, laying off staff that they had in some cases for generations. Um, so I think, you know, you always got to look and we got to provide uh, an insight as to how it could be. And the fact is, some of those retailers, they flourished even in those rough times through getting better. Um, I mean, again, running their financials better, being better merchants, being better managers, hiring better, managing their, their assets better. Um, and now, you know, they're in tremendously positive shape and I'm just so proud that that we were able to maintain that because, uh, as you well know, there were some pretty challenging times where finding good news was pretty hard hard to come by. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so this podcast, we're hoping, will be a continuation of that. Uh, that will, you know, continue to bring great business ideas and topics, and um, even just interesting stories of people people in the industry. I think it's sometimes it's it's nice when we have a chance to connect on a on a personal level, even when it's not completely business related. So hopefully that's what we'll be able to continue that with this podcast. Um, we've got a lot of, of great ideas that, for this that we're hoping to, to work on, but we also want to hear from our readers like we always do. Um, the best stories we have are always the ones that come directly from, from retailers, and so I'm sure this will be no different. Uh, if you have any feedback or ideas or questions about the podcast, you can email us at podcast at sparetailer.com. We also have a new spa retailer app that you absolutely should go and download. You can get information for that on our website, sparetailer.com. Um, is there anything else you think we should let people know about, about the magazine or about our podcast, Dave, and this our, uh, you know, first episode? Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, I think you, you nailed it there. I think the one thing that I could just give a, I guess a small testimonial, um, you know, we just launched the mobile app about a month ago on Spa Retailer. And I have to say the feedback has been fantastic. If you guys have not downloaded it, definitely take a look. And what Megan uh, didn't mention is she's created some very unique uh, app-only content. So that's going to be additional content that's not in the magazine. I know there's a great story up there right now about uh, kind of managing your inventory over the winter. Um, just great stories that are out there. It literally takes two clicks to download it. Stuff's automatically updated to your app, so you don't need to constantly download it. And, of course, you'll see the full inventory of all the previous current and past podcasts we've done. So it's kind of your one-stop place to get uh, the most current news from, from SR. Absolutely. I and mean, we know that you guys are on the go all the time, you know, running between stores, um, you know, going out to do service and installations and, you know, who knows what all else, taking your kids to the doctor. <laughs> and so we're hoping that this app will give you easy access to um, the podcast and to the magazine and to, to anything that we are sending out. Um, yeah, a one-stop shop where you don't have to go searching for stuff. Hopefully that will, um, you know, make it easier for everybody. Absolutely. All right, great. Well, I think I'm going to call it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nice job on your first one. I guess I'll be your, your sole uh, testimonial for that. But uh, hopefully we'll get some great feedback from our subscribers. And uh, thanks for giving me an opportunity, I guess, to be uh, your first guest. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, yes. You know, we've Dave and I have known each other for a long time, so <laughs> there's the <laughs> the the worst kind of interviews, aren't they? Yeah, I can only guess what you're saying about me behind my back. Now, <laughs> be that as it may. Well, thank you for joining me. <laughs> thank you for joining me anyway um, from across the country. I'm actually in Oklahoma. Dave's in in Arizona, so we don't get to see each other very much. Although we spend a lot of time on the phone, um, so this is this Absolutely. is very very closely to our normal conversations. I'm sure. <laughs> rambling away so exactly. thanks megan i appreciate the opportunity all right thanks dave and come back guys we'll be host launching the next uh podcast episode very soon you've been listening to the spa retailer podcast you can download previous episodes on itunes google play or at spa retailer.com slash podcast Be sure to download the Spa Retailer app where you can also listen to the podcast and get access to all the magazine articles as well as exclusive content.